problem? Um, I think uh, we also have another question, actually, that is directed to you, Frank. Um, and you already um, answered in the in the group chat, but I think it's good also for the for the since this um, webinar will be recorded to answer the or to basically ask the question uh, to you. Um, setting up a center for DNI is a process and it takes time. So, what should be the first step or first part of the process for colleagues in Europe to, that want to start this institutional effort and opportunity? Could you maybe okay. elaborate a bit on that? Sure, great question. Uh, my philosophy is all, always start where there is some interest and passion. Uh, and I don't know if this came through in the case. In one of the uh, current ODI faculty fellows, they were already doing a lot of this work and not getting any sort of recognition. Um, we're not being, it was not counting in terms of service or as a part of their promotion and tenure. And so this structure allowed them to embed a lot of what they were doing into a, a, a systematic, um, centrally supported, but unit level based um, process. And so I think the first thing that comes to mind is definitely identifying where there are folks already uh, doing the work and folks who, who are ready to engage. And then the second is, um, to, to make sure that there is some alignment with uh, sort of whether it's a, 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 a school environment or a university setting, that there is some, some buy-in from the leadership structure that they are willing to support. And even in the case of, of limited resources, make some resources available uh, to support those efforts. So finding people who, who are passionate identifying resources, building on, on work that may already be in place, so three things that, that come to mind. Great answer, thank you so much for that, Frank. Um, I think it's interesting, before we wrap it up, uh, since it's about time uh, to finish, finish this webinar, um, it's a good question to maybe also ask you, uh, Saran and Nikisha. Uh, so if you, are, um, if you are a professor, if you are a teacher, uh, if you work with students and you want to start somewhere, uh, what would you recommend them doing as a first step? Nikki, you want to go? Oh, <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty data driven. So from the first step is to try and get some kind of information as to where the problems are. So what is the problem that you're dealing with? Where are your students? Um, because it's very easy to just for us, most of my colleagues just like these students just lazy. They just don't want to try. And so by actually taking on this kind of work, of working with Sarah, I was able to see that it wasn't just laziness. There was more to it. So the first thing for me to get is to try and get some data. And then try and find a project where it, um, where they, where you will have buy-in and where their interest and where their interest lies. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to that, there is a lot of self-work in this process, right? Um, I think Frank said it when he was talking about his case that you know, those of us in our various disciplines were not trained to teach. Some of us were, if you, you know, if your discipline was around pedagogy but a lot of us were not. And so when we come into the classroom, we you want to assume that everyone has genuinely good intentions. But we have found from doing this work for a number of years that intentions don't always equal impact and we can actually do more harm than good. So oftentimes when we do these workshops across the world, we often emphasize that, are you willing to also do this work on you first because we know as practitioners that we often teach how we were taught and so if we don't have the, the, the work necessary to do some of what Svevak in um, Columbia University talks about unlearning and the unlearning process of how we were taught we have a very hard time of changing that um, pedagogical style within the classroom and we can create further offenses. We can turn off amazing students from realizing their potential. And so a lot of this work first starts by the actual faculty, the instructor, those who are leading community change and activism or leading students overall need to first do the self-work to understand why is it that you're doing it? 
what is the unintentional or um, hidden outcomes that you don't even know that you desire as yet from it? What are you willing to lose um, in order to get this work done when you're oftentimes going to do it alone and shredding the course against over a century of doing pedagogy the way it has always been done. And so doing this work takes courageous talks um, and to get a lot of buy-in from those who can impact the work that you're doing, especially the changes that you want to make in your curriculum and pedagogy. And it's not easy. You're right, <laughs> and it's not easy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. So if I sum it up, um, basically it's important to find support, to have the courage, um, and also to focus on data, to actually should know, get to know your students, know who are in your classrooms, um, but also know where the energy is to actually change you know, these institutions um, to become more inclusive. Um, so thank you so much for those answers. Um, I have one or basically two last questions from the audience and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, so how do we make sure that this course stays positive and focused on excellence instead of focusing on problems or like deficit thinking? And what is the role of leadership uh, next to policy? What is your um, perspective on that? One, take it. I mean, I can start. I, I think uh, absolutely um, avoiding deficit-based language, deficit-based perspectives, the notion that our students are broken, that they're, they need to be fixed is, is essential. Uh, unfortunately, that is the, the sort of majoritarian kind of um, discourse that exists in many of our institutions. Um, and part of it is this notion that uh, and I think we've all touched on it in one way or another. The institutions that we currently occupy were built for a different set of students. And uh, instead of thinking about how we can uh, change the institutions, we try to fix the students. Uh, and, and so we're asking uh, to shift the focus from the individual to the institution in a way that suggests when our students don't succeed in ways that we want them to, uh, a big part of that is the institution and the environment, not always the student. And so I think remembering that, uh, and also just staying true to inclusive excellence and inclusive pedagogy. Uh, any, any students that I've taught will tell you that uh, the classes they've taken with me are, are, are some of the hardest classes they've taken. So this is not watering down uh, the, 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 it's not remedial education. This is challenging students to, to reach the highest levels and providing the structure for them to, to be able to do that. Yeah, and um, in terms of keeping it always strengths-based focus, I always start the class by norming what the aims are and creating the norms of the class with my students. And so there is buying about the affirmation and the purpose behind why we are doing this. So it's very transparent. Um, I think echoing a lot of what Frank just said in terms of, um, you know, one of the things that Professor Carl, when I spoke about chemistry, had said, you know, it was blame game was always on the students. And then I started to look, well, what has held constant, but what is constantly changing? So the students were changing every year. There's a whole new set of students. But what laid constant was the curriculum and oftentimes the lecturers, not all the time, but oftentimes the lecturers and the environment. And so saying that, well, if those are fixed variables, but the students are constantly changing, well, how, how are we not addressing those fixed variables then, right? And so starting to re-turn the lens on ourselves as the institution, but also as the classroom lecturer. How does my pedagogy have to change from semester to semester? And that is not easy work to write a new class or prep or prepare for a new, um, the same course, but in a new way. It is hard work, but it is what is required for if we really want to do this work meaningfully. Another thing to add that's pretty unique with the University of West Indies is that 
majority of the lecturers have been there for a long time, as Sarana said, but a lot of our colleagues also went to university with this for their bachelor's. So they were there for their bachelor's and their master's and their PhD. Right. And so the way in which they taught, that's all they know. They haven't been outside of the institution a lot. If maybe for one or two years for like a postdoc, but it's still, and it's, it's part of them. And so trying to be like, hey, it's not always the students. We also have to take a, we also need to be held accountable for what we're producing, what we're putting out there in terms of the quality of students that we have. Um, it can be a hard sell because for them, it's always been this way. It's worked for me. And everyone there is basically echoing the same sentiments because they're all coming from the same, um, from the same place. In regards to the second question around policy, it's, it's clear that uh, leadership have to embrace uh, embody, hold uh, folks accountable for, for the implementation of the policy. Uh, they have to be uh, very uh, intentional about looking at outcomes. I think sometimes we create policies and just the creation of the policy itself is seen as doing something and we forget to look at whether or not the policy is actually producing the kind of outcomes we hoped it would. And so I think that's the key role that leadership uh, plays in this. Um, obviously, being at the center of, of developing the policy, monitoring the policy, and making the ne necessary shifts. Uh, I know it's much more complex than that. There are multiple stakeholders involved in, in developing and setting policy, um, but leadership does play, play an extremely key role. I think the example from, from, from Nikki and, and, and Saran around uh, the, the professor who they engaged, right, play one, it, there was encouragement and support to, to do this, two, the data actually produ produced some positive results. And so now that ideally this person ha has an obligation to share what they've produced and, and use it to uh, extend uh, in other areas across the institution. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Um, yes, I think we are starting to get at the end of um, the webinar. Um, I really want to want to thank you all for participating and really hope to see um, all of the participants in one of the following uh, webinars. The next webinar is actually um, going to take place on June 14th. This will be titled um, Hang In There and reg registrations are open already. Um, this is actually hosted by to us. Uh, so please look at the, um, the website uh, of Milton Clute or look in the, the, the Zoom group chat uh, for the link. And of course, a very special thanks to, uh, to our key experts, Dr. Frank Tewitt, um, Dr. Seren Stewart, and Dr. Nikisha Stevenson for sharing your knowledge and insights with us. Um, I at least learned a lot again um, and will definitely enjoy the weekend full of inspiration. <laughs> I hope, um, I really want to thank, uh, thank you um, from the bottom of my heart. Aww. Yes. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yes. Um, and the last, the last part um, is also that um, Ergon actually um, uh, put it in the, the group chat that we also created a learning community where you can create a profile and be, um, you are all invited to, to, to actually create an account um, and remain um, a part of um, the community that we are um, facilitating as part of the mural, um, sorry, Milton Glue project. Mm -hmm. So thank you all so much and have a nice weekend for those that are you know uh, here um, in the evening and for the rest of you, um, have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of your day. Thanks. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>